Hello, welcome to yet another project finance video. This one, again, if you want to look for this one and you have the, uh, what's it called again, the Google Drive, you go to project finance model exercise and this is the one that's saying ex named exercise number six, IRR and RO. I want to show you that whether you're discussing ROI, ROE, IRR, over time, it amounts to the same thing. That took a long time to uh, get. So at the end of this uh, uh, video, we'll illustrate that you can compute the IRR or a weighted average ROI. Where is the ROI? The ROI is up here. If you compute a weighted average, you get the same sort of results. Now, to do this, I'm going to uh, create a little copy. And then uh, we'll call this our exercise. And don't be sad, but I'm going to delete everything except including our little... Because hopefully, well, this shouldn't take long it's going to have a couple of a, a little bit of excel themes and a couple of other things so we have a seven year analysis and if we we have a, here's our eddie daw which is our cash flow not our earnings earnings is after depreciation just like we saw in the last <laughs> video and we can make a little balance sheet and if we have no debt financing, the return on investment is the same as the this I can call our uh, project IRR. Now, we didn't put any taxes in here. It would have all worked uh, together with taxes. So, and I'm going to, remember there was a little, uh, Let's put this divided by 12. I don't know why I put the true false thing here. Okay, whoops. Oh no, and of course would never ever do that. And to just prove how bad it was, why would it be divided by 12 when it was supposed to be by seven? Okay, that I am sorry about. Ooh, I really shouldn't do that. That hurts, okay? And then we get our earnings. Now, to do that little uh, thing up there, if, if you want, if you would go and uh, let's make a new macro, let's just call it macro, let's just press macro one and then stop recording a macro. If you go to the developer, uh, find this macro one and press edit, uh oh, <laughs> I didn't know I did something with that one though doesn't really matter we're gonna make a function now in finally Excel put this in in 2013 it's not in 2007 2003 97 in any of these other ones I'm gonna put show the formula and I'll put a read in a cell um, if we then type and this is of course unnecessary for doing the exercise cell dot uh, uh, I'm sorry show the formula has to be exactly the same spelling equals cell dot formula okay I hope that works and now if we wanted to do it a little bit fancier we can put a little uh, arrow and side okay let's see if this works oh, I hope I didn't make some silly mistake equals show show the formula and we'll just take that one uh oh <laughs> now I'm it worked but my uh, Excel's just going really slow. Okay, so we can. That's what was in that. Uh, something like that was in that. Did I copy that? Paste it. Okay. Now our net plant is 
let's start with how much we spend in our construction costs, and then every year thereafter, it's the net plant, it, it's the amount minus the depreciation. So let's just control R, it goes down to zero. And we have to be very careful now, our equity balance, we're going to fund the construction. And, whoops, <laughs> no look stupid Dutch thing, I hope I didn't screw it up there. And the, it's the last year equity balance plus the, plus this, uh, 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 oh, I'm so nervous right now, plus the earnings minus the EBITDA, which we're going to pay out as dividends. Shift control R. Okay. And there the balance sheet balances. Our return on investment is going to be the earnings, not the cash flow, divided by the prior year. If we want to do it on equity, why don't we take the prior year equity balance? What happens if I did it inside there? I didn't uh, preserve that. So here's what we have. If we could computed the uh, average down here, we get 32%. Now, from our cash flow perspective, what we have is the cash flow is the EBITDA minus the, the uh, uh, construction cost. What happened? Whoops. And our IRR, which we can just click on the entire row for and be lazy, is 13%. So this average doesn't look anywhere close, right? What is the average down here? 32%. Well, what you have to do is realize, number one, we have to weight it by the investment. So we don't, we can't weight the same amount. So our investment here is 400 divided by the sum of this one. Is that right? Okay, so we're going to, uh, let's press the shift control R. So we'll weight this by 20% and this much higher IRR, we're going to weight by much lower because we have a lower investment. And then this is the funny part. We take one uh, uh, divided by one plus the IRR itself. IRR always seems to have a little bit of circularity involved with it. I should know that theory a little bit behind this one. This is our discount factor. Now this doesn't add up to one, does it? It sums to seven. So we do the weighting. We take this one and simply divide it by the sum of the whole line. And we get a 20% weight for the first one. And then we finally say, okay, let's take this weight and multiply it by this weight. Now, even though those weights sum to one, this combined weighting didn't sum to one, so we have to do the whole process one single more time divided by the sum of this one, okay? And then we copy that across, and our weighted average is going to be this times this plus this times that, plus that, times that, and that will be the same as taking a sum of the product of this and this. So we can take a sum product. Now the sum product is another function that has a bunch of bugs. It's a lot of times better to uh, 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 put a multiplication, and we'll see that later, but for this one, if you want to take the entire line, you can just multiply it, and there we go. You get the same answer and that means I'm going to stop the video. Nine minutes, not so bad.